Whenever I do any sort of power carving work like I did on my most recent TV unit, the carved ripple doors, the conversation inevitably turns to, can you do this on a CNC? Uh, this does actually make a bit of sense. It wasn't that long ago that CNCs were reserved for industrial operations only. Nowadays, there is such a thing as a hobbyist grade CNC. There are such a thing as an affordable CNC. Yes, they still cost a fair bit of money, but they are becoming less and less expensive. They're becoming more and more common. Uh, friends and family might have one or access through a tech shop or high school or uh, uni or TAFE or any of those sort of places. So it does make sense to ask that question. You may not have access to power carving tools all the time to learn those skills, but you might have access to a CNC. This video is about how to make that ripple pattern as it is actually pretty easy. It is a little bit time consuming on the carving, but the rest of it's actually surprisingly easy. Now this is not a full tutorial. This is more looking at the concepts and how you can go about it. With that in mind, I'm not using free software. I'm using software I'm comfortable with. The general concepts you can take to other pieces of software. So with that said, Here's how you can make those ripple patterns. I started creating the height map in Photoshop. To create the ripple effect, we need to create an appropriate gradient, which will be applied radially, thus giving it a ripply nature. This is not a scientifically accurate water ripple. I'm just playing with what looks good rather than worrying about amplitude properly. Every other point in the gradient is white. This represents the highest point in the height map. Between points of white are black, the lowest points. These are represented by the dots below the gradient. The dots on top of the gradient represent opacity. We need to have the opacity trail off towards the right, though it can be a fairly rapid decline. If we don't, every ripple will overwrite the previous one and we can't have any blending. Then it's just a matter of creating a background layer of black and drawing on as many ripples as you feel is appropriate. This should be saved as a PNG. Compressed JPEG can cause some funny stuff. To create the 3D model from the height map, I'm going to be using a program called Heightmap to STL GUI. Link in the description. I'm leaving all the settings on default and just selecting the PNG we created. Once that's generated, I switch to VCarve and create a new document. This is only 200mm square, as I don't really need another door panel for my TV unit right now. Switch to the model tab to find the STL import button and select the STL generated by Heightmap to STL GUI. This will import much larger than the actual document, so the first thing to do is to resize it in all dimensions. Make sure you untick the lock XYZ ratio when modifying the Z depth. When you're happy with the size and location, hit OK. These values can be changed later, so don't stress too much. First, we need to create a roughing pass. For this, I'm using a quarter inch upcut spiral wheel. There are two roughing strategies, Z level and 3D raster. I'll demo Z level first. You can see Z level creates step contours. This is the quicker option, but leaves more work to be done in the finishing pass. Each step is set by whatever depth of cut you have set for the selected bit. Deeper cut per pass will have fewer steps. You could leave it like this. It is an interesting look that could work really well with plywood layers. The other option is 3D raster, which as you can see creates a more 3D looking roughing pass. As this removes more material and varies the Z depth as it's going, this tends to be a much slower option, but again leaves less work for the finishing pass to do. Depending on the look and tools you are going for, you could possibly leave it here and just sand the ripples until they're smooth. Regardless of what roughing method you use, if you want to do a finishing pass, select the finishing tool path option. For these type of shapes, you can get away with a square end mill, but with tighter radiuses, you probably want a radius end mill bit. Then it's just a matter of exporting your G-code in an appropriate flavor. I'll be using easel as the sender for the roughing pass.
that came out surprisingly well. I've taken this to the table saw and uh, ripped it to the appropriate size. This is just the rough, roughing pass. There is no smoothing finishing pass involved at all. But you could still use some sort of sander, uh, like the Arbitec contour sander, to clean that up. Or you could use power carving tools to speed that up. Normally with CNC stuff, you wouldn't bother for one-off projects. Uh, because it's usually quicker just to make it with whatever tools that can do the same job. And then you don't have to get into the full modeling and the programming, generating the G-code, all of that. With something like this, it's actually almost the reverse. Because it takes so long for a one-off, yeah, you do finishing pass on the CNC, no problem. But if you're doing multiples of them, perhaps you wouldn't. Perhaps it would be better to do a really coarse roughing. So perhaps increase the step over to uh, further than whatever I had set, maybe uh, even just shallower finished results so leave more material behind. That'll then give you the generalized shape so there's less to remove with the power carving tool. So it's quicker to do that. Another downside of using a CNC other than that, taking probably a bit longer, particularly when you scale it up, is that you do lose that hand carved look. Now, I've used power tools, so some would argue that that's not hand carved at all, but the point is non-computer uh, controlled, non-motor controlled tool marks and all of that. You could probably introduce uh, something like that, maybe get, grab the smudge tool in Photoshop and just sort of blur some of the lines a little squirrel here and there that could work but again you could use the power carving tools after you've roughed it out to sort of mess it up a little bit then you've got a bit of a compromise between batching stuff out with the cnc and still maintaining a bit of that handmade look if i didn't enjoy power carving so much i'd probably look into this more but I actually find power carving very relaxing even in this cold weather we've got at the moment for me it's a bit of a odd situation where i can see the advantages of this but I don't mind if the other method takes me longer because I enjoy it. Hopefully that has been enlightening to a few of you. Thanks for watching.